um, I'd like to introduce Als Parker, um, who is the founder and director of Devon Energy Collective. And um, Als is very much involved in a lot of local projects. And Als, are you there? I'm here. Hello. Hi, um, shall Al. I put my presentation up? If you could put it up, that would be great. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Als Parker, and um, I'm lucky enough to live uh, just out, just down the road from Bigbury, but I'm sadly just outside the, the parish. Um, and um, I uh, am one of the founder directors of the Devon Energy Collective. Um, the De Devon Energy Collective was set up a couple of years ago, um, and we came from a network, uh, if you're not aware of it, I think most people are, will be here, but there is a network in Devon called the Devon Community Energy Network. Um, and we came from that network. Um, and the idea was that we set ourselves up because we want to see, we want to help Devon meet its uh, net zero targets by seeing more community owned renewable energy generation in Devon. Um, so that is our uh, aim. Um, uh, today, the government announced their energy strategy. I'm sure you've all seen it. Um, it wasn't what I was hoping for. Um, the, their ambitious plans include lots of offshore wind, uh, new licensing rounds for oil and gas, um, nuclear, and we've all heard a lot about that today, I think, in the news. And then on the on topic of onshore wind, they talk about the fact that they will be consulting on developing partnerships with a limited number of supportive communities who wish to host new onshore wind infrastructure in return for guaranteed lower energy bills. It's quite exciting to see that written down. It's something that, um, you know, for, for, for years and years and years, people in the wind industry have thought would be an excellent benefit if you were to de develop a wind turbine uh, near to a community that the communities could actually benefit from reduced electricity. Um, and now it's written down in a strategy. So um, that is a little glimmer of hope for me. Anyway, we don't just work on, uh, on wind projects, we're, we're renewable energy uh, projects. Um, so solar, wind, hydro. Um, mainly solar and wind in Devon. Um, so um, this is my presentation and um, I'm feeling a bit all over the place today because of the energy strategy actually um, and trying to work out, I didn't know what situation I'd be in by the end of today once the energy strategy was released and sadly it's not as good as I'd hoped. Um, <laughs> um, but the most important thing um, in uh, my view, uh, in our view for renewable energy, is that we make sure that any renewable energy generation in Devon is community owned so that local communities can actually build it, own, own it, benefit from it. Um, that way we can keep the economic benefits within Devon and the money from these projects, the sur surplus income from new renewable energy generation could help fund um, net, the net zero transition. It could We could use it to um, warm up our homes across Devon and um, uh, put in heat pumps, put in insulation, put in all the things that we need uh, to keep our homes warm and people uh, less fuel poor. Um, so um, there's some community energy uh, case studies here. Um, the other one that's not on here, but I know YAM Community Energy are here is, is YAM Community Energy. That's uh, within sustainable South Ham's turf. So it would be um, good if you don't know much about their project to have a look at their community solar farm. Um, I, I um, have been a director of West Mill uh, Solar um, and uh, I was the founder and director of South Hill Community Energy in Oxfordshire and uh, they've just written a book that arrived with me today called Power to the People and it's how the community um, did it in, South, in, in Oxfordshire, how they built their own solar farm. Um, so I'll tell you more about this one because this is one that I was involved in, but really it was a group of people, just like a group of people here today, wanted to do something. We were sitting in an area of outstanding natural beauty. We weren't sure whether we could. And we thought, well, we've got a great big field here. Um, we had about uh, 35 acres of land, somewhere between a road and a sewage farm and a railway line. And we thought, well, we, we might be able to do something. We applied for planning permission for a solar farm and it was turned down straight away. Um, and so the community got behind it. And we this is a picture of everyone with umbrellas. We um, 
went to the site. We bussed in two busloads of people. It was about 110 people at the site. And we showed um, photographers standing on faraway bridleways what the impact the, uh, of the solar farm would be like from a visual point of view by holding up umbrellas. Um, anyway, we, we managed to build a solar farm there. And along with the 25 acres of solar panels with um, sort of uh, wildflowers underneath, which are now growing beautifully, um, we also took on the rest of the site and built uh, wildlife ponds, put on put um, beehives um, and rewilded the rest of the area. Um, and it was pretty poor grade agricultural land. So it's a really nice study, uh, case study to see what communities can do. So do, do check them out. Um, this I just wanted to show you because uh, this is just mind blowing in my view. Um, if we wanted to build some serious generation in uh, Devon of our own, um, we'd need to go pretty large uh, in order to make it economic. Um, so this is just an illustration to show you that if we could find a site where we could put four really large onshore wind turbines up to 200 meters tall, um, these, are the so these are the sort of figures that um, we're talking about. And we're talking about um, 500,000 pounds from this project going out into um, Devon communities every year from a project like this for the life of the project, which usually is about 25 years, or that's what the analysis does. And often they get repowered after that. So it, there's an interesting question here about, you know, how much of an impact they make in terms, uh, and how do we weigh that up against climate change? How do we weigh that up about security of supply? And actually the money coming back from these projects, if communities owned it, could be spent on communities. Um, so we've got a new project um, that we've just started um, with funding from Devon County Council. Um, they've just given us a great big, uh, lovely wadge of cash. Um, and we're working in collaboration with Region, uh, based in Exeter. Um, and we are, it's called Grassroots Local Community Energy. And what we're doing is we're trying, uh, we want to go out to all the communities across Devon, all the action groups um, and drill down to communities and ask local people where they think they might be able to host a renewable energy generation site, uh, uh, project of scale. Um, we're recruiting a graduate. So if anyone knows of anybody, the deadline is on environment job, it's on our website, the Devon Energy Collective. It's on the region website. And the deadline is on Monday, the 11th of April. Um, uh, we're hoping a graduate will start with us on the 1st of July. Um, and they will be running this project with support from um, Devon Energy Collective, from me and from region. Um, we want to get a great big list together of potential generation sites across Devon. Um, some of these will not be practical because we won't be able to connect them to the um, grid but some of these will be practical and some of these we can take to western power distribution and say look at these projects can you help us um, get these connected in the future um, so the assignment and this isn't clear i need to work on my pitch for um, local action groups and parishes but the assignment is can you find yourself five acres of land or more ideally more or could you find yourself a site where you could put one really large turbine or more so um, that would mean that really uh, it would need to be a kilometre away from homes to make sure that there is no noise impact if you were looking at wind turbines and we're just working on this now um, in terms of uh, the, the how we um, go out to people how we get the message clear on the assignment and also um, we're going to be putting together a toolkit um, so that um, local action groups can actually uh, go through the toolkit and work out how they find a site. But I think that people living locally know much better about sites than uh, developers sitting there um, on a GIS map in an office somewhere. Um, and, uh, and I would like the communities to develop the projects and benefit rather than BP Solar, who I know has been floating around looking for wind sites uh, on the edge of the South Hams. <laughs> so challenges there's lots of challenges we all know these challenges um at the moment there is a moratorium it, well we're hoping this is going to change but planning means that we can't build wind at the moment in england without significant community support which is very hard to achieve because it really means it needs to be written in the local plan um maybe this is all going to change now that the energy strategies come out maybe we could be the communities that they could work in partnership with and could benefit from lower 
cost of power. Um, space is difficult because we have a lot of national park and area of outstanding natural beauty. We need to work, work out whether area of outstanding natural beauty means an absolute no to, to wind development. I know we've got solar in the AOMB and um, it can be well sited and out of view. Um, and then the electricity grid capacity is a really big challenge. The, the, the network is full um, down in the southwest. Um, the power flow is all the wrong way around. We're generating loads of power in Cornwall, um, sending it up to London, and there's not much space for us here in the southwest to put any more power onto the network. But we are working with uh, Western Power. Oh, timer, timer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Um, but what it could mean, so this is just me uh, pulling together and just making it up. If 80 parishes came up with um, a 10 acre solar farm, uh, so uh, and two and 20 parishes came up with a wind project, just one single big turbine, that would be enough to power 15% of Devon's households. Um, and it would create jobs, uh, reduce carbon, and make a significant income to spend in Devon. Um, I love this logo that somebody did for me the other day. It could be, uh, but the, I love the saying, build it, own it, benefit. That's what I feel is really important. And this is a, a figure that I gave everybody the other day at the Bear Island Conference. Um, apparently in Devon, the population of Devon has 10 billion pounds worth of capital in ISAs. These could be reinvested in local energy and benefits um, from uh, these um, projects could be retained in Devon. So we could find some projects. Um, so a couple of things to say in my last 30 seconds. Um, one is, um, if you want to get involved, if you want to lead in your parishes or in your action groups, um, please send me an email and um, I might hold on to onto it for a bit while we're recruiting our graduate, but um, we really need networks and, and contacts and um, we're just about to stakehold, start stakeholder mapping the whole of Devon. Um, so it's great to be here and living in South Hams and part of this group. Um, uh, if you know of a graduate, we really need a great graduate to join who's really good at comms, but also has uh, is technically minded and knows um, about GIS and uh, ideally has a sort of engineering or renewable energy background. Um, so, yes, and please just get in touch if you've got any ideas. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Al. We're, we're lucky to have you and um, uh, we will really keep in touch on this.